show, so we're uh, we're not professionals yet. We're learning. Oh, this is episode we're, number one. We're gonna we're gonna start off with a bang, I guess. This is episode one of the Live Large podcast. I'm Kevin. We're joined with Nick and Chad Penson, along with his wife Bria. Just a quick overview, if you can. Why don't you introduce yourself? Give us like your quick powerlifting history. Um, you know how you got started. Um, where you're at now, future goals. But then we'll move on to the good stuff. Like one minute of that, because it's yeah. boring. Yeah. Been power since 2011. I kind of just walked into a meet um, that was going on in the gym. Uh, I knew some of the guys there, and they told me to try it out. Tried it out. Uh, I liked it. I sucked at it, but I liked it. So I kept with it. Um, been doing it ever since. Been almost 12 years now. Um, you know, I'm still still number one ranked in 198 in reps. Uh, some goals there to kind of push the ranking up there a little bit. Uh, at least my squat squat total squat and total. I want to get that going up a little bit. And um, I got a couple of meets lined up this year. One in a couple of weeks that I'm not really fully prepped or peaked for, but I'm signed up and I just want to have some fun. So we're just gonna see what happens and enjoy myself like the old days. So um, I think I hit most of the points. But what I missed, I missed something. No, yeah. most importantly. I mean, you just came and took your spot on the team because it's like that's a standing rule. You beat Dan Bell head to head. That's open invite to the team. You beat Dan Bell head to head. It's cool. It's spots there if you want it. So <laughs> you came and took that. You know, so that was that was, one. that was wild to see in person too. Nick pulled me aside. He's like, "Yeah, if he beats Dan, I hit him up right away. He's got a spot on the team." And just watching you guys go head to head was wild. You, him, and John, obviously. Yeah, that was a. Uh, uh, iconic meat in my in my eyes so no that was an all-timer i mean because it's it's not like it's like oh dan you know oh only went like 25 79 or something <laughs> it's like yeah. it was you know a rough day for him you know it's a but it came down to it came down to final attempts you know it's like it's rare that that actually happens at a meet of that caliber or any meet for that matter um so it was fun i mean that was what kern 2020 covid kern uh 21 21 yeah, COVID turn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about you two. Um, obviously, how'd you guys meet? How long you guys been married? I think you guys got married in Vegas. Yep. Um, you want to tell them how we met? <laughs> I feel like she likes this story, so I will tell it. Was it turn 2019? Uh, yeah. Um, one of our friends had a party after the current in 2019, and we just so happened to both be there. He was being a creep from across the room. And all the girls were like, who is that? I'm like, I don't know, but he's stalking us and he's creeping us out. Looked him up, he was already following me. And we kind of didn't know each other after that. And then a month later, maybe, he posted some super dumb meme on Instagram, super dumb. And I responded and I've been stuck since. <laughs> yep. Well, and you picked we the right one. Cause if you would have responded to a good meme he would have had other responses to pick through. So you picked the dumb one. You picked the dumbest one, yes. <laughs> that, was very, that was a very strategic move. You got it. Um, I, actually, I don't. You know what the meme was? It was something along the lines of being dumb. He called himself dumb in the meme. Oh, you know, actually and I was right. like, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, if, you know, ladies, if any ladies out there listening, you know, shoot your shot just by laughing at a DM, you know, I mean, laughing at a meme that might be your end. We married three years later, so. I enjoy very much to this day. So it's, uh... yeah, the meet after parties are always uh, top tier. <laughs> it's all that, all that trend coming to fruition all in one spot. It works out really <laughs> well for everybody. Yes, we, we met at the end of the 2019 Kern at that part. Well, we didn't really meet. We saw each other for the first time. And then I think like two, three months later, we actually like, we've been messaging back and forth for days, every day since then. And um, decided to uh, actually like meet up. And uh, she lives like four hours away. And then pretty much after that, I visited her once. And then it was like two, three weeks later, I came back again. And then I think... Two weeks later, I came back again. And after that, it was like every weekend I was making a four-hour trip. So, I mean, I was pretty much stuck at that point. So, <laughs> like, so you save the gas money now. Yeah, who cares? Uh, yeah, I put like eighty thousand miles in my car or something like that. So I'm, now I'm exaggerating, but it was a lot. It was probably like, <laughs> like thirty or forty thousand, like going back and forth over like a year and a half. So it was pretty crazy. 
not on the Maserati, right? That was that was something. No, that was on the. Uh, uh, I had an Infinity back then. That was one before. All right, so um, not that follower count really matters, but you know, having more than fifteen thousand followers. How many of those do you think follow you because of powerlifting and how many of those follow you, um, you know, because of your story confessions, your Q and A's? Um, like, do you think, so, do you think you have a, a solid following of powerlifters and, and people in the community, or do you think it's just a bunch of weird people <laughs> that, uh, that are getting in your DMS? I'll, I'll tell you straight up. They're all powerlifters and I'll just be honest. Powerlifters are weird. We're a weird bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, straight up. They're, they're like 99% powerlifters um, that all followed me. I'll be honest with that one. And before the confessions and everything took off, it was just, you know, just me posting memes. A lot of people would just follow me for for lifting. And then, like, a few people would follow me for, like, just the memes and stuff. And would come and be like, hey, your story is funny and shit. You know, see me at uh, conventions or expos or whatever. And they wouldn't say shit about my lifting. They'd be like, hey, your memes are funny. And I'm like, Thanks. I lift sometimes too, but you know. Yeah, not my not my ranking. Tell us how your story confessions work, and you know, so you post a question box, and and what happens from there. Um. So it basically kind of start. I don't really know how it even evolved to what it is to what it became, but it was kind of just me just kind of want to do something different, and you know, get some engagement, and just kind of see what everybody was doing. And I just said, hey, you know, tell me something, or just talk to me because I was bored doing programs one day. And I just started getting like just wild confessions. I was like, oh, okay. This isn't what I was expecting, but cool. And then I tried it again like a week later and they like intentionally asked for that. And so basically I just set up the question box and say, like, hey, tell me something crazy. Or sometimes I give them a topic like, hey, one of my favorites, like worst dates that you had. No, those were crazy. I got that one pinned on my uh, story highlights. And it would kind of just go from there. So if I would either give them like, hey, wild card, tell me whatever you want, or hey, tell me this craziest sex story you did or this craziest bad date you had or whatever, and then people would just flood my inbox with it. And um, the biggest one is like, there's like a fuck ton of dudes that want to get picked. Like a shit ton. Call me. And, <laughs> and it's just like, wow bro like thank you for telling me but there's a list of y'all i don't know cool that's great for y'all but i don't i don't know there's also a lot of um a lot of girls want to be in threesomes but don't like want to be they don't want to do it with a with their own partner or whatever they just want to they just want to kind of like knock it off their buckles they want to do it but they don't want to like they just want to fall into a random. Yeah, they're just like, hey, if it happens, I'm all in. But you know, like, I want to do it. But I'm just, I want to, I want to do it with the right people. But I don't want to do it with my person. It's like, well, you're overcomplicating this shit. But that's yeah. all stuff that, too. That it's like, all right, cool. If you actually communicate that in whatever relationship you're in, those are pretty easy things to check off the list. Like, it's not that serious. Yeah. It's just, again, like the social stigma stuff, where it's like, are people worried about how people are going to think? It's like, if it's in your private life no one's gonna fucking know it yeah. doesn't matter do whatever the hell you want behind closed doors like it's all good you don't got to tell the world you guys do because you enjoy that a little bit you know it's like i mean you don't tell everything but i mean you throw enough out there that people got a pretty good idea what's going on um, freely. oh yeah yeah but it's like all right cool you put out there whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you're not it's like all right cool see ya you know it doesn't matter so they literally were started as like a general you're just like, all right, cool. Like normal AMA, I'm bored at home. And yeah, that's how it started. And everyone then, just got real horny real quick. And just yeah, like, just telling me all the types of their, the just, <laughs> in their life. I'm just like, all right, cool. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll run with that. Yeah. So, so can you can you give some examples of some things that like people have told you? You don't have to obviously tell their, their names or whatever, but like some of the wild stuff that you, you know, that you hear. What hasn't hit the stories? I'm sure there's some dark shit in there that you're just like, yo, straight up, like this one's out. Like, no way. Oh man, I've had like straight up felonious activities admitted in my inbox. I'm just like, I'm not <laughs> that man. Um, like, yo, I'm not gonna call from an investigator on this one. Like, no yeah, way. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> They're gonna like don't subpoena me because of a you know Instagram <laughs> fun, man. I don't I don't want those problems. Like, I've had some like some people like admitting to some crazy stuff, like they 
burnt some houses down or like they you know, put a hit out on people. And I'm just like, I ain't posting that. Yeah. Having, sex, <laughs> having sex with their best friend's moms, like. That, that's <laughs> one that actually happened. Yeah, that's fine. That's totally, that's. I'm pretty know. sure I probably posted one like that before though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's a wide variety of, of just madness. Yeah, you get the, the weird sex stories, then you get the people that are just like committing to crazy actual like felonies and shit like that. And it's like, all right, well, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta watch the community guidelines a little bit here and push the envelope, but I, I'm not gonna get too crazy, but I wanna entertain everybody at the same time. That's well, like, yo, so like those weren't the confessions I was talking about here. Like, I'm not yeah. a beast, bud. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting you off your sins here. You got to live with those ones. Sorry yeah, about that. Like, I'm not, I'm not absolving you of your sins. <laughs> if you want to tell everybody what you did, that, that's cool. I won't, I won't tell them it was you, but. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of piggyback on two things. Cause like, I know mental health is really important to you. And you started kind of opening up about that recently, but like when you're getting these confessions or some of this stuff that people tells you, like they tell you, like, do you feel inclined to basically kind of talk to them almost like, almost like they're reaching out to you for, for help or validation. Do you feel some sort of pressure to, you know, help them out in a confession? Uh, I wouldn't say uh, pressure, but a part of the, a part of the reason why I kept doing the confessions is because like I did actually talk to a lot of the people and kind of like, get more to the story of whatever they told me. Like mm -hmm. Some stuff I didn't post just because it was like, it might've been a little bit too personal where they just wanted to get it off their chest and say, hey, don't post this. Or, you know, like, um, or just whatever. Or they just, some people just need somebody to talk to or want to get stuff off their chest. Sometimes they don't care if it gets posted, they just want to talk. And I actually enjoy just talking to people and kind of figuring out what they have going on. And sometimes it gets, it can get pretty deep. Like I've talked to probably, a thousand people doing these confession things. They just want to talk, you know, and they just, I just got to figure out what's going on with their life. And then they're like, cool. I'm like, you know, yeah, like I don't bite. I'm, I'm down to talk to regular people and make a friend out of you. And I might not recognize you from Instagram in person, but we can talk and chat all day on the internet. And that's fine. So I don't really mind it. And I know sometimes people just need somebody to talk to, vent to about whatever they have going on. And I know that that does kind of hit on the mental health side, especially with some of the, random stuff that I get told. Some of it can get pretty dark and some of it is also funny. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes for the dark stuff, sometimes people just need somebody to kind of like vent to for whatever they're going through at the time. But that's cool to know that you're not just, you know, sharing it for comedic relief. You're actually like responding to these people and taking the time out of your day to, to have a conversation if someone is, you know, willing to open up to you like that, you know, yeah. which is which is great. It's like, yo, um, I'll get you started here. It's like, but maybe then uh if it's that deep, go talk to somebody who's like good at this for their job. You know, it's like yeah. I'll a little bit, but it's like, I'm going to refer you. If, if this little quick conversation ain't getting you anywhere, I'm going to refer you somewhere better. Cause I see you do a lot of that in your stories as well, where it's like, yo, you got to talk to somebody about this. Like go, like, it's all right. You know, go get help. It's good. Yeah. yeah I'm a big um, supporter of like people going to therapy or um, even like, so I know like in the military, we have like the chaplains and we have like, uh, actual therapists and, and social workers or whatever that people can go to. And they used to have a big, like, uh, a big stigma behind it. Like, people would be like, oh, it's going to ruin my career if I do this, if I do that. And it's like I, I, like, I hate people to feel like, oh, if I go to therapy, I'm crazy or whatever. Or if I go, or on the other side, if I go to couples therapy, I'll cut my relationships on the rocks. And it's like, that doesn't have to be what it is. Therapy is never like a bad thing. It shouldn't be your last resort. It should be something to say, I want to, hey, I want to better myself or get better. For my spouse, partner, whoever, it's like it shouldn't be a oh if I do this, people are gonna judge me. It's like fuck them, do it, do it for you, not for somebody's gratification. Do it for you and the people in your life. So. Yeah, and you can only handle yourself for so long before you're like, all right, I need, I need help. You know, yeah. Yeah. I recently started. I recently started going back to counseling, um, probably a month or so before uh, my son was born, just because I was like just kind of in a weird place. And I used to go to therapy as a kid and um, hit up my old therapist. I was like, Hey, I haven't heard from you in 16 years, but uh, let's talk, you know? So it was cool. Cause we, we got to catch up and we had a couple hour long conversations over the phone and, you know, but you just feel better, you know? And sometimes you need that instead of just talking to your buddies, you know, cause sometimes your buddies are just going to sway you in a direction. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. Kind of like your gym friends where it's like, Oh no, man, like you got it. You know, we're talking squat depth, right? Like they won't tell you, you know, 
you know, they won't tell you that it was bad. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you just need that 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 other person that's gonna, you know, tell you how it is, you know, or tell you what you need to hear, you know. Yeah, because sometimes like with, with friends or loved ones or whatever, they can be I won't say like toxic, but like if you go to your friends with a problem, they're gonna ride for you like period, like, hey, yeah. you know, you're not wrong or whatever. Like, sometimes your ass is wrong. You, you like, told yo, let's, wrong. let's go burn that house down. I, yeah, like, like, sometimes let's go. It's like, it <laughs> those are the friends or whoever, like, you need to be talking to. Like, it doesn't have to be a friend. That's why, like, when people come to me and tell me, like, what they're going through, whatever, I'm gonna give you an unbiased look, like, hey, bro, that's probably pretty fucking stupid. Probably shouldn't do that. Right. But, you know, you're a grown man, woman, do what you want to do, but you probably shouldn't do that. And then, that you probably should go talk to somebody else that's a little more qualified than you. They're probably going to tell you the same thing, but you should go that way with that. So that's why I think therapy is a really good option instead of just saying, hey, well, I got friends to help me out. Like, cool, lean on your friends, but they're probably a little biased. And that's not a bad thing because they're your friends, but just keep that in the back of your mind and know that. So, But I think it's cool also that you're open, up, open about it because it's like, yeah, you're in the military, so you already kind of have this alpha male you know, persona just being in the military and you're one of the strongest dudes in the sport, you know, so you can be as physically, you know, strong as you possibly can be, but we're all humans. We all feel emotion, you know, um, and to be vulnerable like that on social media, especially, you know, with the sport where it's all about being as strong as you can be like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. And when I got into the sport, I feel like the sport has changed, but when I got into the sport, it was super all about just, it was just male dominance and it, you know what I mean? It's yeah. I'm it, really it, it was kind of like the end of the West side era where it's just like, there was no pussy shit, you know, everyone was yeah. just, yeah, it'd be a hard like, ass all day. Yeah. You know, and I feel like it's kind of there's like a new still a chunk of that hanging on. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's still there. Never. Yeah. 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 It's, look at the top of the sport. It's like everyone at the top now, like it's not those, you know, old school style, like meatheads anymore. Like right. it's people have much more well-rounded view on life, much more well-rounded view on everything. And it's like, like, I mean, as Dan think Dan's thing specifically is when he quit giving powerlifting, everything was when he started getting really strong. It's like, life will always matter more than this shit. It's like, but all right, cool. You got to kind of balance everything out and, and get everything out of it. But yeah. So, so another thing is like, you get all this wild, you know, um, you know, the sexuality stuff is fun, but like when you're talking about like felonious behavior, right. Is it hard to, you know, keep that anonymous? Is it hard to read that and be like, fuck, I should say something. Um, it, it, well, it depends on like what the nature of it is. Right. If it's some, cause usually with a confessional thing, right. It's something that they get in the past already. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, once you're out here, you're like, yeah, nobody's committed to doing a murder to me or nothing like right. that. Uh, no nothing yeah. uh yeah. No sexual assault rapey stuff well, actually there have been some weird borderline sexual assault things and i'm like hey you know y'all did not do that type of shit and i don't ever condone that but I, there's never been like a straight up like rapey or somebody was forced to do something or a murderous type deal so just throwing it out there nothing like that has been admitted to me thankfully yeah um Let's so like keeping it confidential whatever past they could possibly get me in trouble i'm not trying to get subpoenaed i didn't see it it's gone <laughs> mm -hmm. as long as i don't reply to it or like send a message about it i don't remember who said what yeah those so, ones can live in the requests just stay, stay in the queue okay <laughs> stay in the now instagram has the completely anonymous thing where you don't yeah. know you know so now i mean i feel like your stuff could get even wilder because you yeah. can put a face to some of these things that you're seeing you know, now you're going to get some crazy outlandish shit in your inbox, you know? Yeah. See, but that's a weak way to do it, though, because then you're just hiding all the way. And that's what I would trust the real anonymous stuff way less than like your actual story stuff. Like, give some examples. Like, do you have any examples of like how wild everything gets in like the truly, truly anonymous stuff as opposed to, you know, your people that still got to kind of own it, at least to you, right? Like, you're never going to snitch. Um well, so because because I did this so long before like everybody else started doing like confessions and stuff, like I've seen I already seen some crazy stuff from 
the not 100% anonymous one where I just know who it is. Mm-hmm. So I, I did the, the truly anonymous one, one the first weekend. It kind of kicked off, and I did another one today um, that I said I'd do a couple of them. And honestly, they haven't really been worse. The only ones that I've seen that are, like, worse, but they're not really confessions. It's kind of like, hey, talking, talk, kind of like talking shit, you know? And it's like, okay, well, my feelings aren't hurt. This is the internet and you're on a fake app trying to talk shit to me, so I don't really care. But it wasn't really like even straight up shit talking. It was kind of like saying some like borderline racial stuff. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. But um, as far as like the actual like confessions, they've been about the same. It's just, I feel like it's just a bit more uh, participation from like the general public that doesn't like, I guess, want to tell me like, when they, I can see their face because like most of the people I'm just like cool man that's your confession I'm not judging you I don't really care as long as you're not out hurting nobody like that's that's dope I'm gonna share it that's that's it everybody else is just kind of like now jumping in doing it too and it's kind of like there's no face no case so but it's pretty much on the same level yeah. if they get worse than what I've already been told that's terrified actually <laughs> i mean a lot of that's really cool and like why i think people i think are so comfortable coming to you is how open you guys are in your relationship about everything and how you know there's kind of no shame and you know everything's kind of out there and everything's you know kind of very positive and it's it's really i mean it's kind of like a new age relationship right like this nothing like that was ever kind of the norm and it's becoming much more the norm now um where it's like people are going to be more comfortable probably coming to you than someone who's a little bit more traditional and a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of straight laced, I guess. You know, you guys are pretty, pretty open and out there with, you know, how much fun you like to have, Uh, (laughs) which is cool. I mean, that's, that's how the world rolls now. Did anyone give you a new idea that you didn't have before? Yeah. I think the question is like, is there something that's probably like that you've heard or seen that, you know, you guys haven't knocked off your own bucket list yet? (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm gone. <laughs> well without without getting into like too much detail um i will i will say nothing really inspired us there there's a couple of things we might still have on our bucket list but they were already there before the uh before the confession started so are those more things or people on the bucket list <laughs> what is you trying to chase something down or you you know just got something that you need the right situation i'm i'm gonna say things i don't really put people on my bucket list because i ain't taking no flights and i'm not buying no flights <laughs> so all right throw one out there what you got what's left i plead the fifth <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that bad we if it's that fucked up we can edit this shit right out and we we've, we've probably done it you know <laughs> Yeah, Bria, this can go to no, you. It might get edited out, and that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her run this one because she says it, I don't care. I want to be in like a gangbang. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm trying to be all up in there, whether it's me on the receiving end or if I'm coming out of there with my favorite toys, giving. I'm with it all. I want to try everything. And I think it's kind of been fun because we have tried a lot of this stuff recently and lately. and. YOLO. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's what like, that's why you guys have such like a cool, healthy relationship. And like why I think a lot of people are so comfortable coming to you guys. Cause it's like, how many people are going to come out and, you know, kind of say something like that, right? Like not a lot of people are going to be that comfortable talking about anything like that. And it's like, that's also something that's like kind of tough to chase down. You know, it's like, all right, you can't just be like, yo, let's go throw a gangbang together tonight like no that's got to kind of be like a you know fall into it kind of situation i know like kevin probably you got a lot of experience with that stuff so (laughs) (laughs) no but i mean that's also one of those things that like in a relationship right like first date type stuff like you bring something up like that that could make or break you know the rest of the relationship that other person would be like yeah absolutely not you know, sorry, wait, sorry. Back to the game bang question though, if we're getting one up. <laughs> <laughs> um, would that be you with a bunch of like men? Would it be like a kind of like a guy girl orgy thing? Would it, would Wherever Chad watch, would Chad blows. participate? Wherever the wind blows. <laughs> like no, I'm down with it all. Like yeah. if it's all guys, if it's, like an orgy type style, if it's him watching, if it's him participating, 
I ain't just watching him. What about cucking? Like <laughs> <laughs> he's not really, he's not much of a cuck. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm nah. not a cook. <laughs> <laughs> much more of a participator. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't knock it because there's a big market in that, but stop being. Is there something that you guys had talked about, like almost fantasi- fantasized about, um, and after doing it, you were like, yeah, that's not for us? Yeah, same. <laughs> like for example, you were you were talking about pegging. Like, did you try it and say, "Yeah, never again," or you know? <laughs> don't don't want to be pegged, dog. <laughs> well, see, that's it. That's okay. <laughs> There's a bunch of guys in his DMs who want to be pegged. Call me, but, I'll do I'm it. Saying, like I'm saying, was there ever like something yeah. you were discussed? Like, hey, let's let's try this or let's let's bring this in or let's do this. And then after the fact, you're like, yeah, that's not our thing. That's not for us. Um, I don't really think there's been anything that we've tried or we've discussed trying and not actually have liked it. Cause we, we've already talked about the things that we like on our own. Mm-hmm. So we don't go off the deep end when we're together. Like, okay, let's, let's do this. Like um, water play, water sports. I'm not with that, and that's okay. Neither is he, which makes mm-hmm. it even better. Now, if we encounter somebody else who would like that, and be like, huh, well, hey, that's on him to figure out if he wants to, you know, help you out with that. I'm gonna go sit over here on the, on the side and not judge you from a distance because <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to. Get it. I'm, I'm not with it. <laughs> but I don't think I got nothing. Yeah, every, everything we talked about that we've actually done has been like, okay. Now, if there's other people involved, if people were probably like, you know, no, nah, probably never again. But you know, as far as like acts, acts themselves, and now nah, everything's been pretty like, okay, cool, I'll try that again or do it differently or whatever. So, was there ever a situation or like something you guys were unsure of that you guys ended up liking after the fact? Probably anal the first time. <laughs> 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 probably anal the first time because. It's such a, if you ever like read his confessions that he gets from people like asking like, hey, you know, I want to try anal with my girl, but I'm not sure how she's going to feel about it. Or the girl is asking like, hey, I want to try it, but how do I tell him that like these things that he needs to do? And literally everything that he's told these people to do to how to ease your partner into it, take your time, focus on breathing, all of this stuff here, he did for me the first time. And I was like, huh, well, Hey man, <laughs> let's go. So it's definitely a top three. See, those, maybe those are the programs you guys need to start selling. Is like, all right, <laughs> as, like, we got our anal tips 101. It's nine ninety five on the site. Come, That's, can I put it on the live large site? Five week anal anal peaking program. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good one though. Cause like, I swear nobody knows how to do that. Right? I mean, it might sound weird, but honestly, because like you guys are so open and, and, you know, people feel comfortable, it, it might be easier to listen to that than, you know, reading a book or reading one of those like Cosmo articles. Cause it's just like, you guys can, people can relate to you, right? Like you're not just a, you know, an author behind this, you know, you know, story in a magazine, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they can do it. We can do it, you know? So clearly you guys, I mean, I'm going to assume you guys don't really have boundaries. Uh, we, we do. We, we have our own like little set of boundaries and rules for each other or just, it's, yeah, we're not really rules, just kind of get boundaries, yeah. Guidelines. <laughs> Guidelines, yeah. <laughs> so Bria, do you have like, did you have any like issues, you know, with, with all the content that he was getting, you know, on his page, like, um, like, did it ever bother you just seeing like the amount of messages that you would get, or like, ever make you feel like not like jealous or worried or concerned? Um, not really. Yeah. Because I know, like, I know him, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, if the person he's talking to decides to disrespect like me or disrespect our relationship in in any way. He's going to check him. He's going to address that. So I don't really have anything to worry about there. But with all of the messages, it's just like, whatever. They're, 
I'm not gonna call nobody a groupie, but I'm pretty sure they're all fantasizing about him in some aspect. So to them, it's, it's a fantasy being fulfilled in some in some aspect. Mm -hmm. I know who you're sleeping to there's, next there's to you, a, right? There's a certain <laughs> aspect that Chad is very uh, vocal about online that, you know, Everyone, I mean, you, you're very, you, you're packing a fucking hog, dude. That's what <laughs> And the world knows it. Because... You make everybody well aware. Now, to circle back to powerlifting, is that a benefit or an impediment in lifting? Like that's got to, is it more of an issue or do you see that as like some sort of, you know, is squatting with three legs, you know, easier or harder? What's going on? The counterweight. All right. So it, it helps a little bit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yep, <right. laughs> well, like when you're when you're locking out your deadlift you ever just like fucking smash the shit out of it uh when i used to pull conventional yeah that was a, a thing actually forced to go sumo like sorry no choice genetically I <laughs> it, it is what it is it's the only way this bar is getting up <laughs> we're gonna transition to a not uh bbc question um do you consider yourself a role model um, I, so I've said online like a bunch of times that I, I don't, however, I do understand that I recently, like a lot of people have actually come to me about the re, re, re going back to the, uh, sexual stuff that some people have feel more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they feel more comfortable, like talking about sexual stuff and kind of getting in tune with it because they were raised like either extremely religious or just kind of closed off and it made them more comfortable exploring things on their own or with partners or whatever and improving things in that way. So in, in a way on that side, I guess, yes, I guess I could be a role model for powerlifting too. Um, just because of my, like my, uh, my status or whatever in the sport currently. So I guess in a, in a way, yes, I don't behave as a role model <laughs> probably should. And I make that clear that I'm not, I should definitely not be a role model for children or anybody under the age of 18. Um, but uh, I do recognize that, like some of some of the adults and other lifters and just people in general kind of look, look at me um, for some sort of guidance or just role model behavior in a, in a sense. So yes and no. <laughs> See, but there is a lot of good that you bring to the table as well. It's like, yeah, all like the, the sexual stuff, but then you're one of the only top lifters that's out there talking about mental health in any, you know, real capacity. You know, I know a few people kind of touch on it, but you know, you're very open about it. You're very open, you know, with people, you know, talking to you about it and stuff like that. So it's like, and that's, I mean, that little outlet to you might be, you know, the thing that saves somebody along the line, you know? So it's like, it's important. It might not seem important, but it is, it is big deal, important stuff to those people, you know, it might not feel like it to you, but that could be, you know, the, the make or break thing to somebody. Is there anything that you hope that someone could learn from you? Um, Teetering with that, you know, being a role model. I mean, even if you don't view yourself as a role model or, or however you view yourself, you know, is there something you hope that someone could learn from you or, you know, you could give back to, to others? Yeah. Proper anal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um in all, yeah, in all seriousness, probably the, um, if I can tell people to do something, it would be like actually prioritizing mental health earlier on. I didn't really um, prioritize it until like my late 20s. And I wasn't too late, but things had already gotten pretty bad by the time I actually started taking it um, more seriously and trying to get help for myself. So um, if there is any type of if there is a problem at all, definitely go out immediately and, and try to get it. You don't have to be suicidal. You don't have to be, you don't have to think you're crazy or anything like that. But if you're feeling down, depressed at all, or anything like that, go talk to somebody, get some type of help early on so it doesn't get bad. You have like long-term depression or you start getting suicidal uh, ideations or anything like that. So try to get to the problem before it becomes a problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that is probably a big takeaway that I would give everybody because when you wait too long, you're almost 30, you've been dealing with it for 20 plus years. It's a little, it's not too late, but there's a lot of damage you gotta un unravel, you know, at that point. So um, try, to, try to get that stuff taken care of early on and don't feel bad about doing it because we can probably save you or a friend's life. I mean, I wanna say, I think it was earlier this year, I think you, you sent me a DM and you, you were apologizing for not being active on social media. 
you know, and I could, I could sense that you were like <clears throat> down because you weren't, you know, obviously posting and, you know, whatever, I think you, you felt, you know, obviously inclined to, you know, fulfill your role be like, okay, I have to, you know, I have to send videos and this and pictures and whatever, but it's also like, I remember responding be like, Hey dude, take care of yourself. Like that's more important. Like you taking care of your mental, you know, state, your well being, your relationships, whatever, like that's more important than you sending us a squat video or a deadlift video or whatever, because at the end of the day, like we would rather know that you're in a good place, you know, than dragging yourself through the dirt, you know, getting by day by day, you know? So if you had to take a break and step away from social media for a while, you know, and get that reset, you know, I just, I thought that was really cool. And I thought that was really, you know, brave of you to admit that, you know, cause that was kind of when I first started realizing that like, you know, you were experiencing these issues and you were starting to open up about it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that was, <laughs> that was a rough time. <laughs> that was after, um, the showdown a couple of days after that. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So it was the end of last year. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, so the meat, the meat was rough and that's all fine. And then we all have bad meats. I was a little pissed off about it, but I still did. Okay. Whatever. But, uh, I didn't really get a, I didn't get, get any good fanfare online. It was the first time I kind of like got rocked by like YouTube and everything else. And there's a bunch of shitty comments and just like, Oh, he shit the bed, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, I'm just gonna get off the internet for a little bit. And I was also having some on my own, like um, not, I, I wouldn't call it self-esteem issues, but like kind of like I, I felt like I let my own self down and like everybody who was actually like rooting for me, like I felt like I let them down. So it was just a really guilt-ridden time of just like sadness and just deep depression that kind of hit me out of nowhere. And it was just really uh, a lot going on. So I was getting ready to, uh, I got tasked with like a last minute deployment that I barely was able to even get to the meet for. And they ended up getting canceled because I'm going to tell slipped pretty bad at the time. So they canceled it because of that. So silver lining there. Um, <laughs> and um, it was just, uh, it was just a lot going on. My wife had just kind of moved in a few months ago. And um, so I was worried about her being at the house by herself after just moving in with me and like she had no friends in the area so I'm just like bro it's too much going on like I was worried about too much the meat sucked people were shit talking me online that I wasn't it was a bunch of shit that I wasn't used to all at once and I just kind of had a breakdown um so I was like I just need to get off the internet for a few days and kind of reset because it wasn't really it's not really like now you don't really care what people talk about on the internet it's kind of like it's the internet you know people are going to talk mm -hmm. shit it's what they do we all kind of grew up with the internet at this point so we kind of know what it is and um uh, yeah, it hit me a little harder than uh, I was anticipating. <laughs> so I, I realized I need to take a little time for myself to kind of get off the internet so I can kind of regroup. And, uh, how did you How did you cope? Like, what were some of your coping skills? Like, uh, the biggest one was just kind of like not, excuse me, not going on social media. Um, I had to definitely get off YouTube because those. I just kept. I come. I found myself just going back, looking at the new comments, and just fighting the urge to like comment back to, to random trolls and stuff like that. And um, so I got off, the, I got off YouTube. I probably could have stayed on Instagram because like that was kind of where my biggest support was that as far as the, the internet friend support was at. Um, but I knew if I got, if I had just any type of social media going on, it would have just attracted me to the other stuff. So that was one thing, um, just spend more time with uh, my wife. Uh, we like watch movies, play with the dogs and stuff like that. Just kind of got, got grounded, you know, like away from the internet and did a lift. Uh, hung out with uh, Bree and Joe. So I think we stayed with them for like, what, three or four days after the meet. Yeah. So we went to like some, some clubs and stuff, kind of tried to get, you know, not worry about lifting. Went to Vegas and like had us some clubs and stuff and just kind of partied up a little bit and tried to just forget lifting for a little bit and uh, forget that I had to go deploy and all the other stuff. And then once I got home and some other stuff hit the fan, uh, the deployment got canceled, which was kind of a blessing in the sky, like I said, because uh, my orders to come to Florida would have got canceled. Then I would have gone back to California and who knows when I would have left. And yeah, plus I didn't want to be away from my wife for six months. So that was another source of a lot of stress. So once that got canceled and after a little time off, I was a lot, I was in a much better spot. Going into showdown, that was the, the first big meet that you did where, you know, your fans and everyone in the powerlifting world were, you know, 
they were expecting you to do something big and do something special when Kern, it's like, there was a chance that you were going to, but it wasn't, you know, you were on top of the mountain after Kern. So it's like, all right, now you're coming in. You're the top dog. Everybody's chasing you at showdown, you know? So it's like, all right, cool. There's, there's a, probably just a whole different level of expectations there than there was going into Kern. Um, yeah. And that was, that was a big factor too. Cause I, that's why I felt like oh, I really let myself down and let my uh, fans or whatever down and just friends or whatever. Cause I went into the meet and I had like a, a pretty smooth like 805 squat. I had benched like 523. Uh, I deadlifted a little over 800. And I, uh, I ended up squatting 755, which is my opener, but I dropped my opener from 771 to 755 <clears throat> because I wasn't feeling well. And um, that's the only lift I got. <laughs> so I was like, uh, hey man, my best lift is out the window. Cause I was trying to get the world record squat and I felt like if I hit 805, which is a half a pound over the uh, a pound over the world record at the time, when I was like fatigued, I was like, I, I know I can rock this on meet day, and probably pull out a little a mid 500. Uh, I mean, like a low 500 bench and right a little over 800 squat or deadlift, and I was like, that, I'd be happy with that. That'll put me right around like 21, probably like around 250 or so like that, and that would have been perfect for me. Um, Probably would have just been a little shy of uh of beating uh John Hack, but I would have been perfectly content with that because that would have been right along with what I expected to do. And when I was dragging ass at the beginning of the meet, and I was like, "What is going on?" I just couldn't. I was foggy. I had no energy, and I was like, "This is going really bad." And then all of a sudden, uh, my my deadlifts and I couldn't. I, everything was just cramping up really bad, which is weird because I had a really good refeed. I pretty much followed the same protocols as Joe, Joe Sullivan. He had a great feed. He gained like 30 pounds. I gained a little over 20. And um, I had I had plenty of electrolytes. So I'm not really sure what the disconnect was that day. Um, everybody was saying that I cut too much or whatever this case may be. It was really an easy cut. Um, all things considered. Um, so I don't really know what the issue was there. I still haven't figured that one out. Just blame but, COVID. Uh, yeah, right. Probably just probably COVID. COVID. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, because of because of how bad the squats were, put a really bad taste in my mouth. Bench was okay; it wasn't terrible. Um, but then when I shit the bed on deadlift too, I was like, "Man, I'm over this." And uh, but I think what hurt me the most was the squats because I never had to drop my opener on, on squats because I was I had all the confidence in the world that I was going to rock my squats. And then uh, I went to the warm up room. And I was like. Hey man, like 655 is feeling real heavy today. I don't really know what's going on. So, uh, so it just was, it, I was nervous and I was like, okay, well, let's drop it a little bit and uh, like maybe 10, 15 keys and just be safe. And if everything's fine by that time, we can just jump to our original plan and go like 780 to 800 and then go for the world record on the third. And no, no harm, no foul. But the plan was to get the world record on the second and then go for like 820. <laughs> or 8.30 on the third. So I wanted to squat around what Joe squatted because we had pretty much the same prep with squats. So I just didn't show up on meet day for whatever reason. So that, that was a big contributing factor to why I just felt so bad after the meet. Um, the expectations were there and I didn't live up to any of them. Um, my own expectations or other people's expectations, so they kind of hit me in the gut a little bit. Well, it's, and it's really hard too because like power thing, you know, it's, it's you it's you versus you at the end of the day, right? You know, yeah. it's, it's you, it's the bar, it's whatever. Um, but like the team sport in the sense that like you had all your training partners throughout your whole prep, getting you through it. You know, your wife is going through it because you're coming home after a bad day or you had a bad training day or the meal prepping and all the, you know, the bullshit that leads up to it. So it's like, and the whole time you're just waiting until the meet day to like, you know, put in that work. And then sometimes you finish and you're like, yeah, that was all for nothing, you know? So and you almost feel like you're letting everyone down. You know, I think that's what you're kind of getting to. It's like, you know, you're, you're chasing this and you got everyone watching you and everyone's by your side, you know? Um, and I feel like that's really where that like team, um, the, the feelings of team, you know, at least for me kind of come into play, you know, cause I've had some bad meets and you're just like, well, fuck, like, you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. It's like everybody who had a part in your, in your prep and your training is like, damn, I let them down and myself. Yeah. Because they, they helped me get here and I'm not showing the fruits of the labor. Um, 
that that were showing. It was like I, I had this, and then all of a sudden it got ripped away. Cause, cause why? You know. Because mm-hmm. um, I know, I know she she was with me the whole prep <laughs> through all my bitching. We right. had a bunch of drives all the way down from a uh, uh, from Lumpok to uh, Vista, California. It was about three and a half four hour drives. We go out and do squats with uh, Andy and uh, John Hack, and and pretty much do our squats together to film for like the Iron Rebel uh, shoot. And everything was great. She, like, she's waking up early in the morning with me. We're driving down there to go lift. She's lifting. I'm lifting. It was like uh, Andy's there with me. John's there. We're all training together. And it's like I get up there and we're, we're going to have a great showdown with squats. And we're going to have a good lift going into uh, deadlifts. And it's going to be me and him. And he's going to blow me out of the water on deadlifts. And it's going to be fine. But we had a good two lifts going in. And it was like, oh, you need 755 squat. All right, this is not going to be what we thought it was going to be. So. It was kind of like, damn, I'm, I'm really, uh, <laughs> I'm tanking the team right now, guys. Sorry about that, but so yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. It, it, it was definitely kind of a feeling like that, and it made me kind of like not want to. <laughs> I walked out of the meet at one point. Once it was kind of all said and done, I just took a walk like all the way down the street. It was hot as hell. I don't know why I did that, but I walked back really quick because it was too damn hot. But <laughs> I was pissed. I just took a walk. I was like, people were leaving, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna walk. About 15 minutes by myself and just stare at this guy. So yeah, I think I actually talked to Bria. I, I actually asked you how he was doing. And I think at one point you'd said, I, I might be wrong, but you said he, he's got to get right with Jesus right now or something. You <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> because because I had said something to him and I could tell like it just and you get a you get a sense of you know people's emotions at me. It's like you know, anytime I've ever talked to Joe Sullivan at a meet, it's like he's super intense. He's super focused. At the end of the day, he's like back to him, his normal self, you know, but he's also like in that mindset. And I could, yeah. I could definitely tell that you were not having a good day. And I was like, I'm not going to bother him, you know. And sometimes you just need to step out, you know, like that atmosphere is is overwhelming, you know. Yeah. Th- so the reason why, actually, I do remember why I left. I walked out because uh, I kept getting the same question over and over again. And like, I appreciate everybody's, everybody was in the right, like, uh, they, they their intention was there, like, to be good. It was like, hey, how, what happened? Are you okay? I'm like, and after about the 10th time somebody asked me that, I was like, I will punch you in the face. I'm not okay. <laughs> I suck today. I was just really pissed. I was pissed at myself, but I was just like, I don't like being angry around people because I don't, I don't get angry a lot. That's, I don't try to, like, portray that all the time because when I get angry, I'm, I'm, I'm really out of character. I think she's only seen me, like, truly angry, like, maybe twice and it was it wasn't pretty either time um so i don't like to, to put that out there and, and just be angry so i was like i'm not gonna get pissed at people for for being putting their heart in the right place they're trying to ask me how i'm doing so i just left because i kind of got irritated with it because i was just like i don't really know how to keep responding to the same thing to everybody like hey i just suck today because that's pretty much what i was telling everybody i suck today i didn't want to make any excuses i felt bad that morning it didn't really wear off until deadlifts and by the time it did wear off, I was cramping up. So it was like, if I keep repeating myself, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> so I just got up and walked out. Um, All right. Well, we should probably let you guys get back to it. You got your confessions going today. So you got your, your fully anonymous ones. So I know you got a big day ahead of you. You got a lot of social media to do. Uh, a lot of horny folks that need all your help. Uh, you can start putting together those OnlyFans programs. <laughs> no, thanks for coming on, guys. As a, thanks for chatting us for a little bit. And then... Uh, We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. See you guys. Bye. Uh, everything unpleasant. <laughs>